Melchizedek is one of the most mysterious and intriguing figures in the Bible. Mentioned only briefly in Genesis, Psalms, and the Book of Hebrews, his identity and significance have been the subject of much theological debate. Before we dive deeper into the mystery of Melchizedek and uncover the profound connections between the Old and New Testaments, take a moment to click that subscribe button. By subscribing, you'll never miss an episode as we explore the fascinating stories and figures of the Bible together. Let's delve into his story and explore why Melchizedek is considered a shadow or type of Christ. Who is Melchizedek? Melchizedek's first appearance in the Bible is shrouded in mystery and significance. In Genesis 14, 18 to 20, he emerges seemingly out of nowhere, introduced as both the king of Salem, an ancient city later recognized as Jerusalem, and as a priest of the Most High God. This dual role is extraordinary, as Melchizedek stands as both a political and spiritual leader, a combination rarely seen in the biblical narrative. The encounter with Abraham is brief, but laden with meaning. After Abraham's victory over the coalition of kings, Melchizedek steps into the scene, offering him bread and wine, a gesture that transcends mere hospitality. This offering has deep symbolic resonance, prefiguring the elements of the Last Supper and pointing to the future covenant in Christ. Melchizedek then blesses Abraham, acknowledging the favor of the Most High God in his triumph. This blessing is profound, as it comes from a figure who is both a king and a priest, emphasizing the divine approval of Abraham's mission. In a remarkable act of reverence, Abraham responds by giving Melchizedek a tithe of everything he has. This act of tithing signifies Abraham's recognition of Melchizedek's unique and divine authority solidifying his role as a key figure in the unfolding story of God's plan. Melchizedek's appearance is brief but powerful, setting the stage for his later significance in the New Testament as a foreshadowing of Christ. The next time we encounter Melchizedek in Scripture is in Psalms 110 verse 4, where his enigmatic presence takes on an even deeper prophetic dimension. This psalm, attributed to King David, is one of the most significant messianic passages in the Old Testament, and it carries with it a divine declaration that resonates throughout the ages. In this psalm, God himself speaks, proclaiming to the future Messiah, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. With these words, a profound link is forged between the mysterious figure of Melchizedek and the long-awaited Messiah. Unlike the temporary and hereditary priesthood of Aaron and the Levites, Melchizedek's priesthood is eternal and unique. It stands apart, unbound by the constraints of lineage or time, and it points directly to the coming of Christ. David, inspired by the Holy Spirit, foresaw a priesthood that transcends the Old Covenant, a priesthood that would be everlasting, unending, and fully realized in the person of Jesus Christ. This divine proclamation in Psalms 110 not only honors Melchizedek's ancient role, but also foreshadows the eternal priesthood of Christ, who would fulfill the ultimate purpose of mediation between God and humanity. Through this single verse, Melchizedek's significance is elevated from a historical figure to a prophetic symbol of the Messiah. It connects the ancient past with the future promise of redemption, establishing a thread that runs through the fabric of Scripture, weaving together the story of salvation with Melchizedek as a pivotal figure in God's unfolding plan. In the New Testament, the mysterious figure of Melchizedek reemerges with profound significance in the book of Hebrews, particularly in chapter 7. The writer of Hebrews delves deeply into the mystery surrounding Melchizedek, using him to draw a powerful parallel to Christ and his eternal priesthood. Hebrews 7 opens by recounting Melchizedek's brief but impactful appearance in Genesis, but then it goes beyond the historical narrative, unpacking the layers of meaning behind his role. The writer emphasizes that Melchizedek's priesthood is unlike any other, especially when contrasted with the Levitical priesthood, which was the bedrock of Israel's religious life. The Levitical priests, 
all descendants of Aaron were appointed to serve based on their lineage, each with a beginning and an end marked by birth and death. But Melchizedek's priesthood stands apart, remarkably different, because it lacks the typical markers of genealogy, birth, or death. The scriptures do not record where Melchizedek came from or how his life ended. This absence of information is not an oversight, but a deliberate detail that the writer of Hebrews seizes upon to illustrate a greater truth. Melchizedek's priesthood, by virtue of its timelessness, serves as a profound foreshadowing of the priesthood of Christ. Just as Melchizedek's priesthood is not bound by earthly limitations, so too is Christ's priesthood eternal and unchanging. The writer of Hebrews argues that this makes Jesus the ultimate high priest, surpassing the limitations of the Levitical priests who had to continually offer sacrifices for their own sins as well as for the people. In contrast, Jesus, like Melchizedek, holds a priesthood that is eternal. He is the mediator of a better covenant, one that is not dependent on human lineage, but on divine appointment. This connection between Melchizedek and Christ reveals the continuity of God's plan throughout the scriptures, showing how the Old Testament foreshadows the new. Melchizedek's unique, timeless priesthood serves as a symbol of the greater priesthood to come, a priesthood that Jesus Christ fulfills perfectly and eternally. Through this lens, the writer of Hebrews presents Christ as the ultimate high priest, whose once-for-all sacrifice transcends the old order and establishes a new, everlasting covenant between God and humanity. Melchizedek's dual role as both priest and king is significant because it prefigures the dual roles that Christ would fulfill. In Israel, the offices of priest and king were separate, yet Melchizedek combined them foreshadowing how Christ would serve as both the eternal high priest and the king of kings. The lack of details about Melchizedek's origins and death makes him a type or symbolic precursor to Christ, who is eternal and without sin. Christ's priesthood, like Melchizedek's, is not based on genealogy, but on divine appointment and is superior to the Levitical priesthood. Melchizedek's priesthood points to the eternal nature of Christ's priesthood, which is not subject to death or succession. This has significant implications for Christian theology, particularly regarding the efficacy of Christ's sacrifice and intercession. The bread and wine offered by Melchizedek to Abraham are seen by many as a foreshadowing of the Last Supper, where Christ institutes the new covenant in his blood. Thus, Melchizedek represents the covenant of grace that is fully realized in Christ. Melchizedek remains an enigmatic figure, but his brief appearances in Scripture carry profound theological weight. As a priest and king, he foreshadows Christ, who perfectly fulfills both roles. His mysterious, timeless priesthood points us to the eternal priesthood of Christ, who intercedes on behalf of humanity and reigns as the ultimate king. This exploration into the mystery of Melchizedek helps us see how the Old Testament lays the groundwork for the revelation of Christ in the New Testament, illustrating the continuity of God's plan of redemption from Genesis to Revelation. As we wrap up this deep dive into the mystery of Melchizedek, I hope you've gained a greater understanding of how this enigmatic figure points us to the eternal priesthood of Christ and the unfolding of God's redemptive plan throughout Scripture. If you found this exploration insightful, don't forget to click that subscribe button so you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, and feel free to comment below with your thoughts or any questions you might have. We love hearing from you. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the Bible. Stay tuned for more fascinating insights and stories. God bless you.